Uh, Styles, get out of there right now. It's him. He's the Alpha. Get out. <laughs> You must be Styles. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the times the true intentions of live-action television baddies had our jaws on the floor. This video is loaded with spoilers, so watch at your own risk. Because we're already here. This is the bad place. Number 10, Oh Il Nam, Squid Game. Chanyuga. 상금은 손도 대지 않고 그대로 산다고 들었어. 죄책감 같은 건가? In this harrowing South Korean series, the winner of a series of schoolyard games gets millions. The losers are executed. Oh Il Nam was the game's eldest player, and his fragility and diminished mental state made him easy to sympathize with. After a heart wrenching game of marbles, we think we've seen the last of Oh Il Nam. But in the finale, it's revealed that not only is he alive, he's the wealthiest mastermind behind the Squid Game itself. <laughs> His deathbed confession to Gihon ranks as one of the show's most gripping plot twists. Number nine. Arma Krellin, Sharp Objects. I won't kill. I will bring you cake later. Please eat, Camille. <laughs> we'll say our goodbyes in the morning. Okay. Come on, sweet. Amy Adams plays Camille Preka, a self-destructive journalist sent back to her hometown to cover two brutal murders. From small-town intrigue to the complicated mother-daughter relationships, the murder mystery was sometimes the least juicy storyline on Sharp Objects. But the revelation of the real murderer being Camille's half-sister, Arma, was a stomach-churning last-minute twist. Men get to be warrior poets. What woman is described that way? Not Adora. Prosecution says my mother is a warrior martyr. If she was guilty, they argued, it was only of a very female sort of rage. In the final seconds of the series, Camille discovers the perfect white floors of her sister's dollhouse are actually the teeth she collected from her victims. We're then treated to visceral glimpses of Arma committing her crimes as the credits roll. Don't tell Mama. Number 8, Susanna Barnett, Jane the Virgin. <gasps> this CW series, inspired by telenovelas, had everything. There were unplanned pregnancies, mysterious crime kingpins, steamy affairs, and murder. The drug lord known as Sin Rostro had a few villain reveals. In season one, Rose Solano revealed herself to be the big bad in a chilling scene where she buried her husband alive. In the next season, she hid her identity behind a fictional cop named Susanna Barnett. This is your new partner, Susanna Barnett from Tuscaloosa. Pleased to meet you. Tell her roll tide. She'll get it. You know who used blue silk ties? A drug lord that went by the name Mooter. Look it up. The deception included a pair of contacts, a voice modulator, and an actual lifelike face mask she tore off in the season finale. That's one convincing disguise. I never stopped loving you, Louisa. And you never stopped loving me. But you were dead. I, I saw you. That wasn't me. Number seven, Ben Linus, Lost. What did you do? What did you do to end it? Make the doors go up? I did what you told me to. I punched in the code and I pressed the execute button, but nothing happened. 
This juggernaut of a series had mysteries within mysteries and was never short on revelations. But the reveal that among the survivors on the island was another group, the others, was major. Henry Gale presents himself as an ally, but it turns out he is an other who was pretending to be a man who survived a hot air balloon crash. Said, it's okay. I said, get away. Hey, okay, all right. I let him out. It was some kind of lockdown or something. He, he was helping me. His actual name is Ben Linus, and his cover is blown once the body of the real Henry Gale is found. The back and forth between him and the survivors and his complicated arc make for one of the show's most explosive and suspenseful storylines. So I dug up that grave. And found that there was not a woman inside, there was a man. Number six, Love Quinn. You. Where's Candace? What happened? I took care of it. There's someone for everyone. Joe Goldberg is a book lover, stalker, and killer who burrows his way into women's lives, manipulates them, and ultimately destroys them. In the second season, he sets his sights on Love Quinn, an heiress and chef. But near the end of the season, she reveals herself to be just as bloodthirsty as he is. Will is insane. Oh my god. These handcuffs, I think there's a key. I don't know if Will has it or if there's a spare. I really don't know. She has her own trail of victims behind her. In true Joe fashion, this winds up turning him off. It's one thing for him to be an obsessive stalker, but he gets the ick when he's the one being pursued. Did you actually believe I wanted to hurt anyone? I hated doing that to Delilah. Number five, Grant Ward, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Where's our boss? And our team. I don't know. Phil Coulson was a standout supporting player in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but when the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came to TV, his world expanded. One of his fellow agents was Grant Ward, a black ops specialist who endeared himself to the team and to viewers. Agent Ward, are you associated with Hydra? Yes. We all are. That all came crashing down when Ward's true allegiance was revealed. Shooting down Victoria Hand and freeing John Garrett, Ward revealed himself as a double agent working for Hydra. You know, the authoritarian terrorist group? Needless to say, this really complicated his relationship with the team. A no-show, of course. So I dropped into the skylight, used up my whole mag, and hit the final guy in the chest with a flare gun. Boy, you should have seen the look on that guy's face with that. Number four, Harrison Wells, The Flash. You're incredibly clever, Cisco. I've always said so. You're him. The reverse Flash. Barry Allen's adjustment to his life as a superhero wouldn't have been nearly as easy without Harrison Wells. After becoming the lightning-fast superhero, Barry learns how to harness and master his new abilities from Wells. It is Harrison's particle accelerator that gives Barry his powers after all. But midway through the first season, his assistant, Cisco Ramon, discovers his secret. The night that we trapped the reverse flash, you almost died. Mm -hmm. There were two of you. Wells is revealed to be Ivor Thorne, the reverse Flash, and also the man who murdered Barry's mother. Mentoring the Flash had been a long game to time travel back to his own time period. Unfortunately, Cisco pays dearly for finding out his boss's secret. Because I have been stuck here, marooned here in this place for 15 long years. Number three, Jan Bellows, Only Murders in the Building. Oliver, 
Why is there a bassoon cleaner in Tim's sex toy box? It's always the one you least suspect, isn't it? The first season of this charming murder mystery comedy about a trio of podcasters solving a murder in their apartment building dropped a massive bomb on us in its penultimate episode. You two could not look more crazy right now. For the record, it's not fun for me to tell you any of this. Nor I. Nor does it give me pleasure to remind you that you're being recorded. A misunderstanding involving a bassoon cleaner and a box full of adult toys leads the main trio to the real killer. The whole time, it was Jan, the bassoonist and Charles's love interest, who was behind Tim Kono's murder. This, coupled with her lie about being first chair bassoonist, culminated in a pretty exciting whodunit reveal. I want you to know, this is definitely one of my rougher breakups, Charles. I really did fall in love with you. Number two, Michael, The Good Place. They're never gonna call a train to take us to the bad place. They can't because we're already here. The self-absorbed Elena Shellstrop spends almost the entire first season of this charming sitcom thinking she has somehow been granted mistaken entry into The Good Place, a utopian afterlife. But it's far from heaven. Michael, the supposed angel running this paradise, is constantly making mistakes that disrupt the daily afterlives of its citizens. <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe you figured it out. <laughs> oh, God! You, you ruined everything, you know that? But at the end of season one, Michael's true nature and purpose is revealed. He's actually a demon who has designed a very specific and well-disguised hell for the characters. So, everyone else in this neighborhood? Except for you four, everyone in this neighborhood is one of us. After I came up with everyone's characters, we'd just create fun scenarios designed to torture you. The twist changed everything we thought we knew about Michael and the show itself. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Agatha Harkness, WandaVision. Now that everything has gone wrong, thanks to Agatha, naughty Agatha. It's been Agatha all along. And I killed Sparky too. How many villain reveals have a song to go with it? In the MCU's love letter to sitcoms WandaVision, Agnes was Wanda Maximoff's quirky neighbor. Playing the role of both mentor and pest to Wanda, Agnes's true nature is revealed in the seventh episode with a meme-worthy theme song. The name's Agatha Harkness. Lovely to finally meet you, dear. Even if you didn't watch the show, you probably heard the Emmy-winning Agatha all along. Agnes revealed herself to be a powerful witch named Agatha Harkness, as well as the mastermind behind the zany mishaps in Wanda's life over the course of the series. They take power from the undeserving. It's kind of my thing. What TV villain revelation left you gasping? Tell us in the comments. We've had a wolf in the herd the whole time. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.